may i invite uh, mr kiran patel md plg clean energy projects on the stage mr randeep bora head government business clean max solar uh, mr tejpreet uh, chopra president ceo bharat light and power group mr navin khandelwal head investments and strategy hero future energies mr balwan joshi managing director uh, edam infra Mr. Sunil Singh, CEO, OPG Power. Mr. Deepak Khare, Vice President, Technical, GDF, Sues, NG. And Mr. Pradeep, Mr. Pradeep Chauhan, Country Manager, India, Solar Pack, Spain. And uh, Ma'am Shristi Ahuja, Director, Transaction Advisory Services, Ernst and Young. Let's welcome our speakers with a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So, at the beginning of uh, the conference yesterday, we were uh, all having a joke that uh, what is it to organize a conference like is also to organize like a wedding every month. We're doing a conference in some part of the country. Well, it's not just that. It's also to invite all um, Shah Rukh Khan's and Amitabh Bachchan's of the industry. And also, if you're doing it in Delhi, you need a strong luck because it's uh, I believe uh, lots of conferences happening in, in Delhi and um, also uh, we are seeing a strong new market which is emerging in the solar sector which is uh, solar rooftops and uh, like as a magazine and as a conference organizer we are uh, doing a lot of conferences uh, regionally so we have done like three four Surya cons recently in Chandigarh, Hyderabad, Bangalore and uh, I see a lot of lot more enthusiasm in these pockets of the country emerging for solar. The entire ecosystem being built, the value chain being built, a lot of commercial industrial entities uh, eager to now explore solar. Though the buzzword of 2.44, 2.65 has sent some shock waves in those pockets, but definitely it has also, on a positive note, attracted a lot of commercial industrial entities to explore the option of going solar so with this note uh, i request uh, uh, our session chair balwan joshi to take up and he is going to present on the rooftop solar itself so thank you very much my esteemed panelists mr randeep bora teshpati chopra shristi kiran patil mr khare and mr chauhan uh, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, moderate the session. Uh, what I'm going to uh, suggest is that all of us will make a presentation for say seven, eight minutes. And uh, then subsequently we will have a panel discussion. Uh, as a part of the presentation, I would be talking about the rooftop solar. Uh, can you just put on the presentation please? I will give you the background about this particular presentation. My company, that is IDAM Infrastructure Advisory, we are working with uh, a USAID-funded project called Partnership to Accelerate Clean Energy Deployment. And as a part of, we are working in eight states <coughs> in uh, development or scaling of the rooftop projects. Uh, as, as a part of this particular study, we carried out uh, stakeholder consultation with developers, essentially to understand what challenges they are facing and what could be the solutions for those particular challenges. So what I will do is that I will uh, present a few slides on those challenges and then probably what could be the solutions. So I have already covered this particular part that is what is the PSD project and what is the IDAM's role. IDAM is a lead technical consultant for this particular project. <coughs> So the, what we have done is that we have identified the challenges in the four major areas. And these four areas are policy and regulatory framework, interconnection process, implementation related issues, and then the capacity building or media outreach related issues. I think the first two are little uh, important slides. The challenges primarily lie over here. And among this, uh, among this uh, policy and regulatory issues, I think the net metering regulation in the state or at the state level is a, is a really a big challenge. 
the kind of requirements that uh, it prescribes in terms of the net metering requirements. Among those, the first one is how much of the rooftops is you are allowed to install. Some places it is you are allowed to install 100% of the connected load, some percent uh, places it is 60%, some places it is 80%. Then there are other requirements in terms of the DT loading. So what percentage of the DT uh, capacity you are allowed to connect this, uh, rooftops on the LT side of the DT. So that's the first challenge. It varies from state to state and also uh, within the within the state depending on the, if the distribution companies are different, sometimes they interpret it uh, differently. So that's I think the first challenge we need to we need to work around this particular issue and have some uh, kind of uh, standard to be set up by CEA. There could be some rules in terms of what could be the essentially the distribution companies uh, concern should be that you know there should not be reverse power flow on the distribution transformer and not anything else. So you know keeping that in mind how exactly the the quantum of rooftop to be allowed onto the distribution transformer is something one need to look at. The second issue typically we come across is the chief electrical inspector's approval but I would cover that issue into the interconnection related issues. The net metering regulation, the second challenge which comes up is a maximum rooftop capacity that can be installed. And this is particularly a challenge for industrial and commercial users. One megawatt is the maximum capacity that is permitted. And many a times we have seen the requirement is far more than or possibility is also far more than one megawatt. So that's a uh, that's really a uh, challenge which uh, is uh, coming across in states. Of course, the UP and Odisha, two states have taken exception and allowed more than one megawatt capacity to be installed on a net metering basis. But the other states, bigger states, particularly Maharashtra, Gujarat, they haven't uh, taken a very, what I would say, they have taken actually very strong view and not allowed anything more than one megawatt. It's, uh, it's uh, difficult for the large corporates to work in this, uh, this kind of uh, environment. There are, comp there are uh, entities such as say Metro Railway, their requirements are far more than 1 megawatt, their ability to install is far more than 1 megawatt and they are not able to do that. Another funny rule which utilities are implementing is they do not allow you to increase your sanction demand. Many a times you know the sanction demand has been approved several years back when the first time the connection was taken. And the, typically we come across the sanction demand for a household of 0.5 kilowatt. Okay. And now if you want it to be increased because you want to put up a solar rooftop, actually your consumption is far more than that. You have installed large several appliances after that, but you are not allowed to increase the uh, sanctioned, uh, uh, sanctioned load. Coming to the interconnection process, utter confusion, who should be buying meter or who should be doing inspection at what time? Chief electrical inspector, I think this is I think the biggest pain point in many states. Some state regulators or in some states the utilities require that electrical inspector should approve the drawings as well as installation even for the as small installation as 10 kilowatt. If you look at the government of India's rule, it says if you are installing a DG capacity of up to 500 kilowatt, you do not need approval. But as soon as you move from DG to solar, you need approval even for 10 kilowatt. Okay. It is the same thing, it is connected on the same bus, but still you need, you need an approval for 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt. In Maharashtra it is uh, 100 kilowatt in some installations and 200 kilowatt in some installations. So that is a, that's a uh, big challenge as far as the interconnection process is concerned. In terms of the drawing approval at the distribution company level as well as uh, electrical inspector approvals are concerned. Some states electrical inspectors that approval process has been given to the distribution company. So it is uh, okay, but uh, in some states is the two different approvals are required. The th I think the biggest issue is the time which is taken to and implement the entire process. Uh, many a times it takes three to six months to get all the approvals in place uh, in some of the states. So that is I think the huge issue. In terms of interconnection as well as in terms of net metering regulation, the status of RESCO is also a challenge. Uh, in most states, third party RESCOs are permitted while the legal interpretation of the RESCO is still a big challenge. 
because you cannot sell electricity without a license, but the third party race codes are permitted by the regulators within its powers, except for one state, that's the state of Gujarat. Of course, we come across a lot of RESCO projects in Gujarat and I still don't know how they do it because RESCOs are clearly not permitted in under the Gujarat uh, net metering regulations. Okay. <clears throat> what we really need in terms of the implementation challenges, I have not looked at one particular challenge which I would look at it over here, that is a state nodal agency and its involvement. Every state, the state nodal agency's involvement is important, whether subsidy is required or not in term for, for the rooftop systems. And it takes, it's a very, very time consuming process. If you look at the rooftops haven't penetrated to the residential sector significantly today, I think one of the reason is the apathy at the SNA level. Also lack of understanding of issues at the uh, SNA level. Uh, barring the, uh, the states which are bigger states, at all other remaining states, there is a huge challenge on uh, with the SNAs. For the bigger states like Maharashtra or Gujarat or Madhya Pradesh, the challenges are different. They are just, the, their organizational structure isn't ready to deal with the large number of rooftop projects. So what we really need is some kind of a technology solution which would enable rooftop project developer to key in at one place and get all the approvals at, at through automatically through some technology. And uh, as a part of this particular PSD project, we are developing some such solution for Andhra Pradesh DISCOM, a technology solution which would integrate SNAs, electrical inspectorate, distribution company, and even banks for uh, all activities such as inspectorate approval, DISCOM approval, SNA approval, as well as if one wants to make a bank loan. Finally, the last slide of my presentation, I don't want to exceed myself the time. Uh, so the last slide, the challenges which are related to the capacity building and uh, media outreach. As Anand said, there is a huge hype about the solar rooftops. And uh, most people can't recognize the difference between the 2.64 number, which has been arrived at or which has been bid out for a very, very large scale project with very, very special risk mitigation measures to the solar rooftop project. The challenges which are involved in getting loan for cooperative housing societies or RWS in the country. The kind of issues which are involved into the lease of the rooftops. So, you know, the but because of the hype, even that the rooftop sector we have seen, the people demand very, very low numbers and then it becomes absolutely impossible. So the media outreach is required for if the rooftop sector has to grow at a sustainable rate. There are a large number of companies which have come up and actually which are also going bust. I recently came across three companies which in the rooftop sector which started rooftop EPC business and went bust. So you know the large number of uh, players are interested in the business but unless and until the government takes some concerted efforts to create outreach, to create awareness about the rooftop segment, it's going to be a challenge. As far as the distribution companies, SNAs are concerned or electrical inspectorate are concerned, both human resource solutions are required wherein you train those people to look at the different types of rooftops and the challenges which are involved and also train the distribution company engineers to really operate in an atmosphere where there are a large number of rooftops which are connected. So the technical training as well as the IT solutions, both are required for the distribution companies as well as uh, SNAs and electrical inspectorate. So these are the challenges that we have uh, seen in the last, uh, in our survey, which we carried out of us around 60 developers across eight states in last uh, six months. I will stop over here and then I will invite other speakers to speak. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now as a, a role of the moderator for the session, uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Chopra to uh, speak on the challenges faced by the developers? First of all, thanks a lot, uh, Balwant. It's, uh, it's good to have a small crowd like this for a change because hopefully we can make it more interactive and uh, actually have a really good discussion around the challenges we all face. Uh, so I think from that perspective, I think uh, it's always good to see a small group. So uh, just a quick background about us at uh, BLP. Uh, we basically are a power generation company. Uh, we have three companies in the group. Uh, the first one is the large utility scale, wind and solar. 
Uh, we have a joint venture with NL, which has, uh, which is today must be the largest renewable energy company in the world and the second largest utility in the world. They've got about 85 gigawatts of capacity and about 35 gigawatts of renewables, and they are building between two and two and a half gigawatts of renewables every year uh, all over the world. Uh, the second company we have is on the distributed solar side. Uh, it's a JV with Stadcraft, the state-owned utility in Norway, uh, and we continue to do rooftop, ground-mounted, and open access projects all over the country. And it's the third company that I have that I find is quite exciting, uh, especially given all the challenges all of us have in this industry. Uh, we started off with a very simple hypothesis where we are investing hundreds of millions of dollars building large power plants across the country. How do we, how do we improve efficiency? Because one of the biggest challenges we have in this industry is this. I used to be an OEM selling turbine selling technology. Uh, the couple of challenges now that I'm on the developer side and an asset owner side is the fact that there's a level of lack of transparency between what's actually happening in my asset and what the OEM, OEM does in terms of O&M on my asset. So one is transparency. Two, we have a variety of inverter types. We have a variety of uh, or, uh, turbine types. And I don't have one consolidated way to track all my assets that I own. Uh, thirdly, from an optimization perspective, uh, how do we improve performance and productivity? And lastly, our small 5,000 rupee battery was shutting down a 12 crore turbine. And these were the things that used to really hassle me. So what we've done is, We've created one of the most advanced uh, artificial intelligence platforms where we track 400 tags every second from our wind and solar farms. We collect it onto the cloud, and we have data scientists teaching computers how to do machine learning and predict failures and improve the performance of our assets. In addition, now we're doing it now for assets all over the world. We are tracking close to two gigawatts of wind and solar farms all across the Europe and the United States, where we do the predictive intelligence for wind and solar farms all over the world. So that's a little bit about in terms of how we've been able to improve the efficiencies. So Balwant, I think all the points you raised are absolutely valid. I think what's happening in the industry, one of the biggest challenges is that the sustainability at which prices are being bid uh, is going to come into question very quickly. Uh, people are not, not taking into account the risks that we all face in terms of curtailment, lack of payment in, uh, I don't know how many of us have any assets in Maharashtra. Is anybody in the crowd a wind assets in Maharashtra? I guess not. So you don't know, I don't know if you guys realize that we've not been paid for one year, right? In Maharashtra, Rajasthan's eight months, MP six months, Tamil Nadu is over a year. So it's, a, it's, you know, I don't think any of us are pricing all that in. If you take into account the curtailment issues we face in Tamil Nadu, or the fact that we're being forced to back down in some parts of the country, uh, you know, we have spares issues, uh, connectivity issues, uh, grid issues. When you take all that back in, and you price the fact that we're pricing solar at 244 and wind at 265, I'd love for anybody to teach me how it's ever going to be sustainable in this country. So my big concern is the fact that are we heading uh, in renewables the way we're going in, therm in the thermal sector, where a couple of years from now we're going to find huge issues in terms of what we what's going to happen. Uh, so that's my biggest concern is the sustainability in terms of re returns in this industry and where this is heading to and whether this crazy desire to get market share is overcoming all the benefits that we're trying to do in building scale. Uh, so I see there's gonna be a huge shakeout in the market over the next couple of years. The banks, all the PSU banks, given all the NPAs that are happening, are tightening really hard on all of us. They're lending, and I love to hear what Srishti says about it, but the banks are becoming more disciplined in terms of lending. All the PSU banks are allocating fixed amounts in terms of lending of debt for renewable energy. And if they go over that limit, unless the bank has the ability to sell down, they're not being, able, they're not being allowed to lend uh, money. So I think that's going to be the second biggest issue is a lot of these projects that are winning bids, are they going to get finance from the banking sector? So I can go on, but I just think I'll stop out there. So I say the big three big challenges, but one from my side. One is the sustainability. Is risk and reward being priced incorrectly, given all the challenges we know? Two, uh, uh, in addition to the risk reward is the fact that I don't know if there are any solar panel manufacturers here, but we're seeing prices go up 20 to 30% over the last couple of months. We're seeing some of the Chinese panel guys hold us at hostage, post us actually paying money, transferring money to China, putting the hedge in place. We're still seeing, asking them, asking panel manufacturers, asking for, for, for more money even prior to actually shipping the product. So I just don't think that's fair or that's correct or that's the right way to do business. And that's what we're seeing out here. So when there's no predictability of price, how are you going to actually predict the risk return of the projects? And secondly, uh, 
given the fact that the banking system is getting more, more, more prudent and conservative, which is a good thing, I think that's going to be the other big challenge we're going to see in terms of growth in this industry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chopra. Uh, may I now request uh, Deepak uh, yes. to elucidate his challenges? Yes, so uh, this side, Deepak Khare, uh, representing NG, uh, formerly known as GDF Suez. So we are, first I will brief you about the company and our presence in India, apart from the global presence, maybe few of them are knowing. So uh, we are the French multinational company and uh, the French power utility is there and we have, uh, the French government is having 30% stake in our, uh, this uh, GDF Suez and we are the world largest IPP, uh, close to 110 gigawatt globally, uh, among which 103 uh, gigawatt in operation and 7 gigawatt in construction stage. So we are mainly in three business. One is the power generation, other is the natural gas, and third is the energy services. So, in uh, so uh, that and all the sources of power generation are there, being coal, uh, biomass, hydro, natural gas, nuclear, solar, and wind together. So among the total portfolio, we are having 10% of renewable, which makes of five gigawatt of wind and three giga, uh, two gigawatt of solar and other renewable sources together. So we are working in seven con 70 countries together and uh, we are present in India since last four years. And uh, uh, we have uh, a subsidiary company called Solar Direct through which we are doing the solar development and we have portfolio of 800 megawatt uh, right now and uh, planning to grow by two gigawatt in next two to three years. And uh, ap apart from solar, we are also developing wind portfolio uh, with a uh, one gigawatt of vision in next uh, three to four years uh, with a, a P, com P backed company from Dubai. And uh, we are also exploring opportunities in uh, distributed generation, rooftop and uh, um, energy services uh, in, in terms of uh, PV charger and electric, electric vehicles and, and the other business like that. So uh, we are present in India uh, through this, uh, after the COP summit 21 through International Solar Alliance and uh, which is uh, promoting the solar uh, uh, globally. So the major uh, things I think, uh, you know, everybody is knowing that the cost is coming down and the um, tariff is coming down, which is pushing the cost from the BOP side and lot of optimization, lot of uh, re-engineering, lot of uh, things to happen to make it happen because of the gradually coming down the tariffs. So uh, we can we can have a uh, uh, four or five options or maybe multiple options to think to go for innovation for the upcoming this 1500 volt uh, DC system inverters, high efficiency panels, and uh, efficient uh, modules, high efficiency modules, and this Jinko Solar yesterday talked about the uh, park technology and uh, five bus bar design. So that all will boost the uh, capital cost uh, optimization and further uh, boost in the uh, energy yield. So that uh, with the seasonal tilt, with the tracker, with uh, uh, dry cleaning uh, robots, we can optimize the energy yield and optimize the uh, uh, LCOE to be uh, uh, in the in the competitive uh, uh, scenario. So uh, and uh, further uh, for this uh, operation and maintenance, a lot of uh, uh, new concept is coming, extended warranties happening for inverters. So plant uptime is the one of the current concern. Uh, where uh, a developer should uh, focus and increase the uptime by uh, uh, frequent uh, cleaning, by, uh, by uh, maintaining the uptime of the equipments. And, and uh, so that overall is the things. So the major challenge as a developer we are facing is the price variation of the panels. We are uh, dependent on the Chinese suppliers and uh, the variation and nobody knows the uh, and down the line one year what will be the projection and so a lot of uncertainty is there so uh, that is the biggest concern and the other concern is the land acquisition for the non-solar park tenders uh, company of the foreign companies like us have uh, will face a lot of challenge in this uh, land acquisition because of the fdi restrictions 
uh, for the foreign entity in the land acquisition and the absence of the digital land records we face for the non solar park tenders so that is one of the concern area and uh, uh, we all know that the pp uncertainty is there after this karnataka case and um, renegotiation for the wind tariffs and which is which uh, gives a lot of discomfort for the foreign company or uh, any company who is in the business and the other challenge is the open access projects the uh, uh, other option for a developer is uh, either to be aggressive for this uh, uh, 2.44 or 2.65 numbers or explore other options uh, so open access also is a good option earlier but now it is very tight because of this um, transmission and willing charges and cross subsidy charges so making the project uh, very very uh, cut and throat uh, so so uh, down the line one year it will be uh, further the same condition will be happening like for the uh, utility scale solar projects and uh, third uh, uh, issue is the plant performance so you know that uh, uh, chopra sahab has already discussed that the back down and the curtailment is happening so that gives a discomfort uh, uh, to the uh, developer that uh, a plant uh, you are ready you are available but you are not able to uh, generate so that is a revenue loss and you are not able to uh, meet the investors requirement so and furthermore i think as a suggestion going forward this uh, domestic manufacturing to be promoted from the government uh, like we have discussed 100 gigawatt target for uh, solar capacity addition so there must be some target for manufacturing addition as well uh, uh, like maybe 5 gigawatt or 10 gigawatt every year one uh, manufacturing base either cell manufacturing or module manufacturing to be added that will uh, match the uh, both the things uh, energy production as well as manufacturing base and further it will improve the domestic employment and uh, and uh, self sustainability in terms of uh, pv modules so uh, that is from my side and thanks great uh, thank you mr khare in fact uh, both solar and wind side you have covered uh, uh, very well at, and for operational as well as the contractual issues